you mentioned that you look at systems. And so how would you characterize the system of Sudbury? Like a lot of people think that schools tend to be run by a charismatic figure who is going to, you know, c create that environment. But we as people familiar with the <laughs> with how human minds actually work realize that that while there may be some charisma on the part of the leader, it doesn't work unless there's a system to support the whole thing. How would you describe Sudbury as a system for psychological safety? Well, first of all, one of the things I always say to the students in school meeting, which is the body that runs the school, I, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I tell new students the, the school meeting is like the principal of a traditional school. And school meeting as a unit works together to accomplish everything that needs to be done in the school. In mm -hmm. school meeting, every person has a voice. It's run like the New England town meeting, the old town mm -hmm. meeting, where it's one vote to each person. Students get, they can count. There are way more students <laughs> than staff. And one mm -hmm. vote to each person automatically makes them feel quite safe and quite willing to speak up because they know their voice matters. We, do, we don't do the clerk of school meeting the way traditional Sudbury schools do. We use the Native American talking stick, which is one little tweak we've added because the kids liked it better. That means whoever has the talking stick decides who speaks next. They look around the circle and they see who has their hand up. And I might have mine up, but I don't necessarily get the talking stick. That is very empowering for young people. They see that often, you know, the four-year-old will get the talking stick. And we have a rule in our school meeting that people under eight may speak to any issue they want. They don't have to speak to the current agenda item because our little mm -hmm. ones often tell us what they had for dinner last night. But they grow up learning to speak in community and, and not being afraid, mm. you know, as a former speech and English teacher. I love it <laughs> that they are comfortable to speak in a group very young and that carries on through their whole childhood. Mm -hmm. But that circle sets the parameters of the school. And those are the safe boundaries. We're, we're governed in our school by two primary rules, safety and respect. Mm -hmm. And school meeting sets those boundaries. All the rules that they make in school meeting are weighed against safety or respect. Safety mm -hmm. for myself, for the other, for the environment, for the building. Respect to ourselves, respect for the other respect for the environment, respect for the building, etc. Mm -hmm. And children feel very safe and comfortable when they know that those boundaries are upheld. And it's the mm -hmm. job of the Judicial Committee, which is one adult, one older student, one younger student, and that rotates mm -hmm. every three weeks in our school, who gets to serve on the Judicial Committee. Their job is to uphold those rules. So mm -hmm. anyone may write anyone up to the Judicial Committee for a violation of rules. We're lucky our behavior is quite good in our school. That takes some doing over time. Right. But they write up a rule infraction like about three or four years ago, I got written up for leaving my lunch mm -hmm. out on the table and I had to go mm -hmm. to Judicial Committee and explain that I took a phone call and it was an extended mm. phone call. I didn't know it would be that long and I was in the office and by the time I came back out to finish my lunch, somebody had written me up and so I was excused by judicial committee. But the fact that a student felt that they could write me up and bring that to JC was very important for the kids. Right. And right. believe me, everybody in the school knew it and that was <laughs> because 
you know, I remember telling Jack, one of our older boys, the day that you can tell me no is the day you will graduate because he was very <laughs> willing to, you know, just do whatever. And I, you know, you, you have as a student in the school as much right for what you want and how you want to do it as I have for it. And that's really important in setting that emotionally safe environment. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.